Why in the world would you want to learn to sew something by hand? Well, there are a lot of folks out there who don't have access to a sewing machine or have never learned to sew. And knowing how to sew a few basic hand sewing stitches may just come in handy. I'm Jan Howe from YouMakeItSimple.com. Today I'm going to teach you how to sew three basic sewing stitches that you can do by hand. Grab a needle and thread and let's get started. The first stitch we're going to go over is the running stitch or a basting stitch. Now when threading your needle you can either use a single thread or a double thread. I'm going to use a double thread. So there are different types of needles that you can use for hand sewing. There are quilting needles, a needle that's called sharps, or there's a between and a milliner. So if you get a, a package of needles just get one that has some a, a variety of different kind of needles. Depending on the project you're using, even though there's a long, it's a long project, you don't want to get your thread too long or else it tends to get knotted up. So a good, you know, about 16 inches is a good length. Knot the thread or do a double stitch at the end of your sewing if you don't want to have a lot of bulk in your fabric. I usually, most projects, when I mean hand sewing, just knot the thread. To knot your thread, just bring the ends of the thread together. Wrap it around your pointer finger and then roll it. And as you roll it, pull it and it will make a knot at the end. Just clip off the excess thread and you're ready to sew. And just so you're getting a straight stitch and it's easier to stay on course is I like to take a ruler and on the seam allowance of where you're going to sew or wherever you're going to sew just take a pencil or a chalk pen and just make a line. So I'm just going to make the stitches just go up and down along that line. See how big those stitches are. So this is this is good for just quick temporary seams or if you're just wanting to hold something in place or something that doesn't need to be fancy close stitches. So you can see how that just up and down and you can see how I if I pulled that that would create a gathering if you're making a skirt or something that has a ruffle you can pull that and make a ruffle a running stitch basting stitch so the next stitch is a back stitch and it is more secure and it's something that mimics the, what a sewing machine would do. So this is a really secure, um, strong method of if you need a really secure um, seam. So I'm going to take a few running stitches with the knot on the bottom. And these first few stitches, I'm going to make them bigger than normal, just so that you can have a better view of what these stitches look like. So instead of just keep going up and down, I'm going to come back and reapply my needle right next or right in that same opening as this stitch right here. And then I'm going to come back up equal amount so that thread is in the middle. So it's even on each side of the needle. So as you pull it, you can see that that is a continuous, and I'm going to go back. That's why they call it a back stitch. I'm going back to that stitch there, going back in, and coming equally on, out on the line on the other side. So as 
you stitch. You want to make sure that you're not pulling it too tight, that, it's, that it has easy, even tension there. Really helps to have that line drawn so that you can stay on course. Otherwise, it's really easy to start having your stitch look a little crooked. So I'm going to show you a trick that makes this a lot easier if you're sewing a long seam is to get some kind of cushion or pillow that's a little bit more on the firm side and pin your project to the to the bolster so you just on one end so that you can get your hand underneath and it just makes it so much easier you you can keep that pulled tight just makes it a lot quicker. So when you're getting close to running out of thread, take your needle to the back side, take a stitch, and instead of pulling it all the way through, take your needle and wrap it around that loop a few times. And then when you pull it, it'll make a knot. and re-thread your needle, knot it, and continue sewing. So you can see when you open that up, how strong of a stitch that is. Now obviously if I had, if I were using the right color of thread, a white thread, you wouldn't see that on the other side but I'm using the dark threads just so you can see the stitches. There you have your basic back stitch. For the herringbone or stretch stitch, I'm going to show you on this woven fabric first and then I'll show you on a piece of stretchy fabric. This stitch is a common stitch for hemming and also using on stretchy fabric. I have, I have drawn two lines pretty close to each other. This will help guiding me as I sew. If you don't have, if you're sewing on a dark piece of fabric, you can use a chalk line if you want to, but it's really helpful to have those lines. Come up underneath on either the top or the bottom line, and we're going to be working from the left to the right. And I'm just going to come down at an angle to that bottom line and take a little stitch. Let's see how it makes that little diagonal line. Then I'm going to come back up onto the top line and take a little stitch. I want the needle to come out just above where that bottom diagonal came out. It'll make more sense as we get going here. Then I'm going to go back down to the bottom line, about that far away, take a stitch and have it come out right directly below this thread point. You want to make sure that you're not pulling it too tight, keeping an even tension back up to the top, taking a little stitch, coming out. Then again, if I wanted to make that easier so I can go a lot quicker, I could grab my bolster and pin it at the top. So I can just hold underneath it. Make sure that thread is on the left side. You 
of a nice seam that doesn't pop like if you were sewing leggings or something that is stretchy look how far I can stretch that and it's good it's not going anywhere it's not going to pop so I'm going to show you what would happen if I used a regular straight stitch on this stretchy fabric when I pulled it so I, there you have just a, a basic running stitch and if I were to pull that did you hear that so I'll show you where that see how that that just came undone and it was knotted on both sides it won't take that stretch but when you use that stretch stitch herringbone stitch see how that stretches no popping good thing to know so there you have it your gathering basic running stitch your back stitch and your stretch stitch make sure you're subscribing to the channel for upcoming tutorials we'll see you in the next class